Hello there, Star Wars fans, and welcome back to another RebelScum.com video review. And today, I have the pleasure of reviewing the new HasLab Razor Crest for the Vintage Collection. This is probably the most anticipated vehicle of a very, very long time for, well, any scale, honestly, in, in Star Wars collecting. This is, this is definitely a grail piece. This is so awesome. The box looks amazing. Uh, Hasbro did a pretty decent job shipping it. We do have one ding. Of course, it does come in a shipper box, right? But we do, we do have one ding right here. So in, in transit, it just probably maybe just fell off of a shelf or something in the truck and just maybe hit like a rod or something. Who knows? But no big deal. The outer art looks awesome. You've got Mando, you've got Grogu, you've got Quill, IG-11, which we'll have in this video today with us too. Of course, I brought my other figures for us to play with. Just like in that old original Kenner fashion, you got some awesome, awesome play detail where the action figures are interacting with different features of the piece. You've got that awesome sketch art on the other side of the box, which looks wonderful. Love the sketch art. And then there's some more on the bottom where the jaw was tore apart the Razor Crest for the first time. This thing, this thing went through so many things. And of course, at the end of this video, we're going to blow it up. Like, actually. No? I don't get to blow it up? You said I get to blow it up. I only agreed to do this so we could, you know, have have an uh, you know laser blast come in. Of course, when I, I had it all planned out, I was gonna load this thing up with, you know, some some serious firecrackers and stuff, and then uh, we I was gonna have our editor just edit in a laser blast come in, you know, from the corner and right you know right when it blows up, and then we're just gonna blow it up. So you're telling me I don't get to blow this up? That's no fun. Can I, can I throw it on the ground really hard? <laughs> Don't let me have any fun. All right, well, we're not going to blow it up, I guess, but there you go. Anyway, the box looks amazing. Let's get this bad boy out. So opening this panel right here, here we have the instructions. Um, it's not quite the nice bound booklet we got. With the uh, with the bars, so that's something to note. Um, I, re release by release, I hope maybe they don't make a habit of this um, because I, I kind of like the really nice bound book of 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 the barge and even of my Haslab Unicron when I got that for myself. Um, I hope Haslab doesn't make a habit of cheaping out on the book because while there isn't a, too much to cover in this book, sure. It's, it's part of the ceremony of getting a HasLab piece. This is, we, we invest as collectors a lot of money into these HasLab pieces, and I think Hasbro needs to treat it as such. That's just my opinion. Um, maybe you guys have a similar opinion. Maybe you think the book's not important. You just put it away somewhere, and I did the same. I put my book away somewhere. It's not really a big deal. I don't think it's the most important piece, but... Given the price point of what we paid for this sucker, you know, just uh, just a, just maybe not be chintzy with it, you know. All right, so it's 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 in there really well, so we're gonna have to shake it a little. Okay. Thank you for the hand. Whew. And we went ahead and pre-cut the tape, but there's some really, there's a really good strip of tape all the way around. The foam itself isn't even perfectly straight the whole time. There's some indentions and shapes in the, in the foam. On this side, We've got two of our carbonite, carbonite pieces right there. We've got the landing gear for the Razor Crest. On this side, we've got the bottom of the display base. So I'm going to start by 
I'm gonna set these aside actually. I'm gonna start by going ahead and removing those little bits over there. Get my handy dandy blade right here. Just make sure you're careful, cut away from yourself of course, and you know, uh, just practice safety with the product as well. So don't just jam the blade into anything. Just put the edge in and let it do the work. Okay, so we've got the uh, Rodian that we saw in the first episode hanging up there. And then here is Mithral, who we see is the first bounty that he catches on screen. Really cool. I love how he's got the, the binders on. That, that looks awesome. And there are two more inside. So we'll get to those. I'm going to go ahead and do the same over here. Get that piece. So that's the... That looks like it's the... Uh, oh, right side. Looks like it's the right side uh, landing gear. No, left. Got my left and my right mixed up. This looks like it's the front central landing gear. And this one looks like it's the right side. Come on. There we go. There's the right side landing gear. All right. Let's go ahead and flip this over. We'll get the base out. Nicely wrapped up. Oh, that looks good. You got the uh, the Mandalorian right there, and some. Um, well, it's not it's not quite shiny. It looks like they just used some silver paint on that. But there you go. So that's the first part of the base. Uh, there's nothing else on the outside. I believe this is the top. Yes, it is. Awesome. I'm just going to set that aside. So, as you can see, there's the Razor Crest. There's our carded pieces. There's the engines. There's the other carbon, carbonite figures. And here's the rest of the base on that side and this side. And our, the Mandalorian, who is baggy, not carded, with the other weapons and stuff that goes inside the Razor Crest. So we're going to go ahead and remove this one at a time. We're going to start with the base. I'm going to close that for now. There's the base. We're going to come over to this. And looks like it sticks in pretty straightforward in a specific way. So just follow the pattern of the shapes. You'll hear a nice click. And you'll know that's in its proper place. So there's the base. It looks really nice. Glad we made it to the other tier unlocks for the stand to display the piece. Here is the carded figures. There's the Jawa, which is slightly different from the other carded Jawa. As you can see, so this one's VC203. That's the regular off-world Jawa. This one's kind of the leader of the group. And this one comes with the cut open egg, whereas you can see this one comes with the not cut open egg. Oh, actually this one comes with both. How nice. Also comes with the little the little blade, comes with his little necklace. Other than that, I think they're the same mold. So there you go, there's Jawa. We will not be opening this unfortunately on camera, but we will show it off in card later on throughout the video. And here is the carded Grogu. And this one comes with a nice, very metallic plastic. That looks so cool. Version of the pram. It also looks like it comes with his, I think, bone broth. Yeah, it looks like a little bowl. Comes with his bone broth. Um, other than that, it's it's a similar figure mold to the other through through quarter scale Grogu we got. Now, what's also really cool about the new VC Haslab pieces going forward, they are on their own numbering system now. Whereas 
Uh, Yak Face was numbered zero. This one is numbered has zero, zero, one. This one is going to be has zero, zero, two. So we'll get to see that good later. For now, I'm going to set these aside. Okay, so here we have our other two carbonite pieces. We've got some lady that he caught and uh, some dude that he caught. Maybe they were like a uh, Bonnie Clyde sort of couple, except they got frozen in carbonite. Good for them. Good for them. That's better than the alternative. Um, so we have all four carbonite slabs that come with the Razor Crest. Um, here is... The Mandalorian. So this is a unique version of the Mandalorian uh, Beskar mold. This one has a cloth goods cape instead of a non-cloth goods cape. And other than that, it doesn't look any different to me. So yeah, it does have the signet too. So other than that, it doesn't look any different to me. We'll go over that here in a moment. I'm going to set that aside. Let's go ahead and get the Razor Crest out. So here is, and it was taped down, but we went ahead and pre-cut the tape um, over the paper for it. So here it is. You can see the Razor Crest in all its awesome glory. Man, that thing looks awesome. We haven't put the engine on, engines on yet because they come packaged separately. So let's go ahead and get those pulled out. Oh, and one of the panels already came off inside. So we'll just, uh, just uh, pop that back on. No big deal. This thing's always having parts come off of it. What a pile of junk. Set that right there, I guess. And here's the other engine. So we can see, and I love the painted detail on this thing. The weathering, the nice, uh, the nice silver bits all over the weathering on top. The, the discoloration on the engines because, you know, they run really hot. And then, of course, the engine effect on the inside, the clear orange-ish pl orange plastic just looks really, really good. I love that. Set that like so. And I almost forgot the cheek guns. The cheek guns look so cool. Again, a lot of that awesome painted detail on here. Got that kind of like bronze-ish bronze looking tip. There's that. There's the other one. And here's another baggie with all kinds of blasters and accessories, bags, all kinds of things. Really, really awesome. Really awesome. And it looks like we've pulled everything out of the box that we need to pull out. So let's go ahead and assemble the Razor Crest. Let's start with the landing gear. So this thing has all kinds of awesome panels that pop open or come off completely to show all kinds of awesome detail on the Razor Crest. So let's start by coming to the landing gear panels. So the front one has this door that slides down, which is totally awesome. I, I love that so much. That's such a cool detail. Um, so we're going to take this. That's just going to plug straight in like so. Nice and easy. Next on the sides, we've got these two little panels that open. So this panel opens like so first. So you want to open that bottom panel. Then that other panel folds out. And then we can take our leg right here. I think it goes, yeah, under. It goes under this panel. So make sure you're holding this panel out while you're pushing that in. And you can remove these. Once you put them in, they're not just stuck there forever. So you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Come on. Oh, well, that one, I guess, was overlapped a little bit. Um, hold that out. Push that in all the way. And there we go. Now it's, now it's landed. We're gonna go ahead and put on the uh, big engines over here. So they slot in a specific way. Also, as you can see, there's shapes to where they go in. J 
just match in those shapes to those holes just like you did when you were a kid. Like so. Fits in nice and snug. Come to the other one. Easy peasy. Next we come over to the cheek guns. Those just plug into the sides. Nice and easy. Did I put those in right? Or did I put those in upside down? I think I put those. No, I put those in right. Just making sure. There we go. And that, this thing looks so cool. So, so cool. And there you have it. Now it's all assembled. It looks, like I said, it looks really, really awesome. I'm, I'm just like, I'm kind of blown away. It, it, it just, it, it's basically what I expected and I had some pretty high expectations for how it was gonna look in person and, and I'm pretty happy with it. it I'm satisfied. Uh, so let's start with uh, the cockpit. So the cockpit has a lot of awesome detail in it. We're gonna start with the front right here. It doesn't sit on a hinge. It's actually, you, you remove the whole thing but there's some awesome paneling detail on the inside of the cockpit. Of course, all of the glass parts on the outside look really good. Here is all that inner, inner detail on it. The seats don't move, unfortunately, but they painted um, a lot of the panels on the upper dashboard, look, which looks really good. Um, you won't be able to see it right this second, but the, uh, the, the shifter where the, the knob for Grogu goes actually is threaded on on the thing, which which is really cool. Um, aside from before we open up our bag aid Mando, in case you were wondering, uh, and I have the new snowy Mando, um, which we reviewed here on rubblescum.com. So if you haven't watched that review, go click over and watch that. But uh, it will sit in the seat with the plastic cape in case you were wondering. So here we go. All right. And as, as you can see, he doesn't look weird or awkward holding the controls. The cape's not getting in the way, like at all, really. Um, it's, not, it's not putting any kind of weird stress or strain on the figure. It doesn't kind of cock his head the weird way to where he's like looking strange. Um, and then also, in case you were wondering, um, here is AVC, the child, since we won't be opening up the carded one. Here he is. Well, you probably won't be able to, yeah, you won't be able to see him right there. Um, but there he is. Did he slide off the chair? No, he didn't. Okay, cool. There's something else rattling around in there. I think then he slid off the chair. Um, yep, what are you doing? What are you doing, Grogu? Always, always goofing around, always. Little, little stinker. But there he is on the controls. He does hold the controls. Uh, you can, you can put them in his hands, which is really nice. He does look really awesome. If you uh, want to go ahead and close off the cockpit, I think it looks really, really awesome. Like that. Mind the glare. Apologize for the glare. But yeah, you can you can see him really well. It looks it, it looks very cool. So there's that. Um, opening it up. There's there's a lot of cool ways to open it up. Of course, you've got the side door here. If it wants to cooperate. There we go. We got the side door here. You got the struts that articulate with it. That's so cool. And then of course you've got the little extender ramp right there for your Mando or your child. Okay. Um, and, and that looks really sweet. And then of course you can take another, take another Mando figures. Mando figure, take another Mando figure. I know I said figures. That's because I have several figures here that are the Mandalorian. 
There we go. And he, he'll stand in the doorway there pretty well. That looks really sweet. And then you've got the, look out, Grogu. You've got the rear hatch, which opens right here. You've got that rear hatch, which opens up really nice, right like so. You could take another Mando figure and stick right there. And what's also really cool about this thing, go, go ahead and close up these real quick, is the top open hatch above. So this button right here, you push on that, and that unlocks this whole top cavity. We'll get to this in a moment. And then you get a good, nice, clear view of everything inside of it. Get to see the, the cargo net there on the side the carbon freezing chamber right there, and more. So when we open up these other hatches, you, you can see into it a little bit, a little bit better, like the toilet all the way at the back, for example, which unfortunately the toilet doesn't articulate, the toilet doesn't come down at all. I'm a little disappointed because how is my Mando gonna take his dumps if, if he doesn't, if he can't play with the toilet too? I'm, I was kind of hoping you got to play with the toilet. Um, you also have this whole, which is really cool. You also have this whole side panel right here. That's removable as one of the removable panels. I love all the removable panels so you can get into it with more uh, playability and stuff. I, I just really like that. So there's this cool little ladder right here, which is removable. Um, and then you can get to the, the little cargo net section and do all the, do all the cargo net stuff, which I think is really awesome. You got these cool little panels that pop open all the way up in the back. Um, you got the you got the weapons cabinet that opens up right up in front of the ramp. So now you can see that there. You've got the once you close that, you got the other little hideaway cabinet here in the back near next to the toilet where you can put your little Grogu for when you're doing heist jobs. There you go. Now you can see him all the way there in the back. And and there's just so so many cool little just little things just also, it's the little things in here that what make this piece so so big and so cool is uh, has Haslab actually took the time to mold all these pieces in there, have all these removable panels that we would want to have, um, have the little hidey spot for Grogu. The carbon freezing chamber does open up. You can put figures in there, um, and the uh, various carbonite slabs. do fit inside of them, and you can seal it closed with them inside of it. Uh, speaking of the carbonite freezing slabs, so go ahead and move that over to the side. Let's look at the top. So here we have the little escape pod that sits at the top of the Razor Crest. I don't know how Mando's supposed to get to it while he's in space, but hey, I, I don't know. We never saw him use it in the series, and frankly, the Razor Crest blew up anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter now. Uh, but you remove this top panel right here. And you get to see all that awesome detail on the inside right here. And then here is the Razor Crest's escape pod. I was kind of hoping that the uh, viewport on this thing was going to be clear plastic so we could see inside, stick a figure in there, and just see who it is. Um, but there's all kinds of awesome little detail paneling on this thing, little thrusters on each end. And I like how the thrusters kind of resemble the thrusters that you would see on a Mandalorian jetpack as well. Uh, to open this thing up, there's just a little tab in here. You're just going to take... Your, na your fingernail or something and just push in on it and just open this up 
because there's that little little hook right there that hooks onto that when you close it up. So that's the way you want to open it from the front. You can fit a figure inside. You can take your Mando. Line him up on the inside. Close it up all the way. And you have your Mandalorian in there. That's kind of why I was hoping this part was going to be clear plastic. Um, I, I guess I don't know why I thought it, thought it was, but I thought it was going to be for some reason. And that way you could see what figure you have in here in case you wanted to store like your Cara Dune or something in the escape pod for whatever reason. Um, but now that he's in his pod, you can just eat it across the room if you really wanted to and see how it lands. I wouldn't personally, but hey, it's something you could do. And that's pretty much it for the escape pod. Now this top hatch doesn't really have any more removable panels, but well, I guess I already revealed it on this side. So on this side, we have the little hooks where he hangs his carbonite slab. So um, right up here in the middle of each carbonite slab, right at the top is where you wanna, I believe, hook it. Oh no, that's not it. You've got a lip right here and right here on the back. So it clicks on like so. So there, there's Mithral. We're gonna go ahead and file him away. We'll go ahead and grab everybody else. There's the Rodian. File him away. We'll take the, the angry lady. File her away, whoever she was. Doesn't matter to Mando. He's a very professional bounty hunter. Doesn't let him try to talk him out of it. Doesn't take bribes. Doesn't let him wander around his ship without punishment. And as you can see, they hang on there remarkably well. And then you can just, you know, oh, pull them out. Pull them out of the little section, you know, off to the side and move them up around the, uh, the little hang thing. Oh, I did it again. And then you can just bring back your razor crest over here. Go ahead and get everybody out over here too. You take your razor crest here and pop that back into place and freely move them around your razor crest. And they go all the way to the back section. The hooks do so you can Take them all the way out to the ramp so he can unload them nice and easy. Go ahead and put the escape pod back in. Very cool. Okay. So there's that. And while they're hanging, like I said, you can just move them around. You can get your hands through those. Yeah, just move them around. File, get them all filed and stowed away for the trip all the way back to Navarro or any, any other Bounty Hunters Guild outpost that he might be working out of at any given time. Or we could just unfreeze a few of them and you know have have them not transported in uh in carbonite like mithral here he almost he almost made it he almost made the trip but he just had to he just had to be a little bit nosy you know and you know what they say uh curiosity carbonited the cat at least i think that's what they say all right let's talk about all the removable panels now now that we've had fun playing with our carbonites and other things. So aside from that big gaping section over there, there's removable panels on the engines. So you come over here, 
You can take that panel off. Come over here. You can take that panel off. Oh, that was Grogu. Luckily, I've got another Grogu. There is another. Um, you can you come over to it, this engine section. Take that same engine panel off over there. Take that engine panel off over here. So the same engine panels, as you can see, come off of the engines. Come over here to where the cannons go. Take that panel off. Come over here to this side. Take off that panel. Come on to this side. Take off that panel. It's a lot of removable plants. What's really cool is while some of them have interesting like paneling texture on the inside, this one actually takes a, ch a chunk of wall with it for that side. So you can actually see, see that gaping hole right there on that side a little bit. Um, let's see. On the front, I think we have a little bit more. Let's, we've got uh, this one that comes off where this cheek cannon. Maybe it's easier if I take the gun off. There it goes. It was easier. Pop that back into place. Um, I feel like there's another. There, wait. Is there? There is. That top panel where the button is comes off. Um, this panel on the rear comes off. But that's not so much to reveal any kind of detailing or underworking of the crest. That's to reveal his tail cannon. So he does have a rotating rear blaster for the Razor Crest, which I think that's really, really cool, having, having a little hideout blaster. I, I, I mean, I would assume uh, a Mandalorian gunship, which the Razor Crest is, uh, would have such things, and, and, and I think that's really awesome. But once you strip it down, man, it does look a little, <laughs> it does look a little ragged. Those Jawas were not kind to the Razor Crest. They were pretty thorough when they strip it, stripped it down. But it's also kind of funny to display it like that, to, to display it all, you know, naked and devoid of, of its paneling. But this is also why, you know, you get good Starship insurance and you make sure to keep valuables out of sight when you land on, you know, strange and different planets. And you, you know, lock the doors also. Why, why didn't he just lock it? I mean, yeah, Jawas probably have their ways of picking locks and getting into Starship, sure. But, I mean, you know, it, it, that's, that's what happens when, when you fly around. I mean, was he necessarily going to Space Detroit? No, but still, lock your ship. All right, so we got all these panelings off. It looks really cool. Now for the other, the other fun stuff, the little stuff. Now we're getting to the, the weapons and things. And before I forget, there is one more panel right over here that pops off right there as well. So there's that one. There's that one also right there at the top. All right, guys, now for some of the little bits. Here we have our baggied the Mandalorian right here with the cloth goods, the first three three quarter scale. Heck, the first the Mandalorian action figure released by Hasbro with soft goods, which I'm kind of annoyed that it took a very, very awesome but pricey Haslab project for us to get a soft goods Mando because soft goods are superior. They're, 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 they're better. They just are. And this Mando does look awesome. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get him out of his baggie here. He just had a little, little strip of tape on there. You just pull that and it'll open up real nice and easy. So there, there's that. Here he is and here is his cape. Oh, man, I love capes, capes. 2022, vote for me. Vote for me is vote for capes. Uh, it looks so, so sweet. I love all the little blaster holes and tears and stuff in it. I love that you can have it to the side. But 
you know what I really, really love about this? Is that in his little wrapped up paper accessories right here, which does come with his pulse rifle, his blaster pistol, as is tradition, but also his jet pack. What I love about this Mando figure is not only can he wear his cape, but he can wear his cape and his jetpack at the same time, which is not something that can be said about the other Mando figures. The other Mando figures, it looks wonky if you try to put them on both at the same time, so it's kind of a it's kind of a one or the other kind of situation. Can put his blaster in his holster, just like the other Mandos. I mean, really, mold-wise, this really isn't a different The Mandalorian figure. Uh, where did I put it? There it is. I had another Entertainment Earth stand, three three-quarters figure stand. You can get these figure stands on Entertainment Earth if you want. If you're watching this on the rebelscum.com website, just click the link on rebelscum.com. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, well, thank you so much. Make sure you like and subscribe as well, but go ahead and click the link down below for, um, for, uh, to, to go to Entertainment Earth and get yourself some figure stands to go with your Mando in case you want to display him standing next to the crest proudly. Figure stand is a good way to do it, especially these EE stands. The Entertainment Earth stands are awesome. So you can display him with that. And here he is with his pulse rifle. Let's go ahead and put that in his hands. And there we go. Finally, a Mando we can display with both his cape and his jetpack at the same time. I know that's such a little thing to be annoyed at, but it's been driving me crazy since we, well, since 2020. So. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Hasbro. All right, here are the other accessories. Uh, Man Mando comes with lots of blasters and things because we have his weapons cabinet to fill up and we can store these blasters in his weapons cabinet. He also comes with a lot of like bags and other gear and those will hang up on the various hooks on the wall paneling on the inner side of the Razor Crest as well. So here we have, uh, here we have that little bag and uh, here we have a... Uh, duplicate of that bag but with some slightly different paint so this one's got a darker brown handle and some uh, darker brown sides as well as some darker brown uh, twine or cords or something holding up the tools on that here is this bag and here is another bag just like it except not painted it was just cast in green paint so here's the painted version, here's the unpainted version, just to give you a couple different versions of the bag. Here is the uh, this bag, and here is a painted version of that, cast in green plastic this time. And then we've got two more bags to sort through. We've got, uh, got this bag right here in light brown plastic, and then this bag was ca cast in dark brown plastic. So we've got about, Four, six. We got eight different little bags here. So uh, Mando has his uh, choice when it comes to um, cargo travel bag accessories. We have a little uh, basket here for Grogu to sit in, so we can set that in the. Um, ooh, we could set that in the uh, pilot or not pilot seat, but the passenger seat up front, so he can sit in that a little bit better. We've got various weapons here. We've got a the same blaster that uh, Cara Dune uses in the series that she gets from Mando. Here's the drum, the double the double drum for said blaster. That just fits on right here. Let's see. Just, uh, I think that goes right there in the middle, doesn't it? There we go. Got, I think got that on right. That looks pretty cool. So there's that. We've got a uh, Stormtrooper blaster, a little E-11 blaster right there. We've got a... Uh, Blaster similar to the uh, Death Watch Mandalorian that saved young Din Jaren as a child. That's right here. And I think that's the first time that's been cast in 3 3 quarter scale. And I believe we are getting that figure at some point here in uh, the Vintage Collection. Um, 
here's this type of blaster that looks really cool. Not really familiar with that one. Here is another awesome, awesome looking blaster. We've seen this one used in the Mandalorian series. Got some little blaster pistols. That's a cool little one. I like that. That that one's kind of like in the, almost looks pearlescent. Got this little blaster pistol right here. A lot of, a lot of little blasters. A lot of little blasters. Got this little, almost looks like a little blaster submachine gun, kind of. Got this little blaster pistol. A lot of little blaster pistols with this one. We've got this little blaster pistol. We've got, oh, there it is. We've got this little blaster pistol. There's some really, really tiny, tiny blaster pistols. We got this little blaster pistol that almost looks like it's a little flare gun. That's pretty cool. And when, then we got this little blaster pistol. This little blaster pistol. And we got two more. We've got this little blaster pistol. This dude was armed up. And this last little blaster pistol. And every single blaster pistol that he comes with, every blaster rifle, they're all unique. None of them are duplicates. He has zero duplicate weapons whatsoever throughout, which is, which is pretty cool and kind of interesting. I kind of would have expected to see a couple of duplicates right here um, it, throughout it, 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 at least a couple. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly a little, a little surprised. And we've got some little thermal detonators. And they're, they're actually, they're tiny, but they're actually molded. We have three, three little thermal detonators. And I know they're probably supposed to look silvery. Um, maybe Hasbro intended them to, but it looks like they're in like a pearlescent plastic, much like this little blaster pistol right here. So that that's all the accessories that come separate in the other bag. Um, we're going to go ahead and start putting them in because, well, he's got to have his, uh, he's got to have his weapons, you know, easy to get to. So we're going to go ahead and come over to this right here. We're going to pull, pull that down. I know I'm doing it over some of the accessories. Um, we're going to open up his little weapons cabinet right there at the end. And I'm going to go ahead and start putting these in. Um, like so so let's see get to where i can see it oh yeah there's a lot of awesome pegs and things so what you're going to do is you're just going to peg on on the loop of the blaster where where his trigger finger would go um, they do actually in the instructions they don't show you step by step how to put each one in but they do show you where where each blaster goes so you do know where they go so what you want to do is you want to just kind of refer to that and just start picking up blasters and sticking them in so this one right here goes on that um if you're facing it that right door right there on that right door so we're going to go ahead and put that one in going to loop it put on that loop i talked about earlier and that one's in and then step by step we're just going to put in each piece at a time And there we go. There's all the blasters in there. That that definitely took me a few minutes to, to get all those in there. Because um, I don't know about all of you, but I've got some um, big hands. You know, I've got big man hands. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was definitely tricky. Definitely tricky uh, getting those in there. I will say... It really helps if you just pull the doors off of the of, of the cabinet itself to, to kind of get in that with, with just the weird awkward angle and how small those pistols are. The biggest challenge is definitely putting the detonators in. So um, uh, have fun. Have fun doing that. And 
Um, and luckily also that ladder that was right here, like I mentioned earlier, is removable. So um, taking that off helps you because you're kind of kind of want to come in through this panel right here, have one hand uh, in, have one hand out, kind of helping you stabilize the razor crest while you put those in, but also feeding you the blasters and things, fe feeding this hand or whichever your dominant hand is, I suppose, the blaster and things that kind of get them pushed into place. Um, if you have a pair of tweezers or something, maybe that would help. Um, I was trying it with some needle nose pliers, and it was it just it, it was getting more um, difficult than it was really helping me. So, like a pair of tweezers or something good, pair of tweezers maybe will help uh, if you if you have those handy. I know I know some collectors keep those handy for applying uh, uh, decals and things. So. Um, there you go. Anyway, all the blasters are in now. It looks, I think it looks really awesome having, having all the blasters in. That's, there we go. That, that's just me. Um, it, and it drives me crazy that the easiest, uh, the easiest spot to get to, which is just the door right, right here, only has one blaster, one blaster on it. And it's not even one of the smaller blaster pistols, which has to be some kind of cruel joke. Because that was not easy. Uh, my, arm, my arm was a little tired after that. So uh, as far as the bags and things, I mean, there's not really a specific place. The instructions don't really show a specific spot for the bags. So, I mean, just kind of, you know, pick wherever you want. You got, you got a little thin hook right there next to the weapons cabinet. I think, I think yeah, I think yeah, I can see that. Um, right there in between the weapons cabinet and the carbonite thing. Um, you got another one, you know, right, right over here next to the, uh, right next to the carbonite chamber. You got another one right there. And then on the inner side of, you know, the, the removable panel over here, you got plenty of other hooks to put them wherever you want. Just, just litter litter the walls with survival gear put them put them anywhere it's your choice you got plenty of places to hang them and and they you know they hang they hang pretty well you know blooper reel they hang pretty well there you go mostly well i mean i don't imagine you're going to be doing that with your razor crest so much so anyway uh and I did notice one more thing uh, while I was finagling the door to get the uh, get the weapons on there. Um, there is another cabinet just below Grogu's stash cabinet. Another little another little hatch right there that that just opens up downward. So it is on a hinge. It's not like a pop out hatch. I mean, you can pop it out if you want to, but um, yeah, all the way right this way, all the way. All the way at the back over here, it just kind of get my get my get it there. There now you can kind of see it sticking up a little bit. Yeah, that that hatch right there that does open up. Um, the cargo net is removable. If I didn't mention that earlier, it is it is removable. Um, I got part of it hanging down. I'm not going to completely take it out because I don't think it's going to be super fun to stretch and put all the way back in there again so i'm just going to leave it as it is but the cargo net is removable i'm trying to think if there's anything else i've missed up to this point other than the cargo basket and i think i haven't so we're going to go ahead and go back to that um he does of course it does of course come with the cargo basket i just remembered that i had the other mando in the cockpit still that's funny um so what's cool about this is if you were to open up your carded Grogu, you're going to get a stand with the pram much like this one. Okay, so this was the regular single carded release of Grogu. And what's really cool about it is the stand for it is removable. Now, it does have a specific shape to it. And what's nice is the little basket right here also has that little, little shape to it. So you just uh, fit the shape in the hole like you learned when you were a kid. And then you can put Grogu in the basket here for when he's riding shotgun with Mando. So you can actually have that standing here in the cockpit rather than having it in a seat or something. Of course, you can just, you know, 
set it in a seat or something. Let me let me kind of. And actually, as it turns out, if you have it standing in the cockpit, it's about the same height as as, as if it was sitting on a seat anyway. So you can just kind of have it stabilized, maybe in between two seats or something. Uh, I wish it sat a little higher. I mean, I guess you could put it on the seat kind of overlooking Mando's shoulder, and now you can see now you can see Grogu in there a little bit better if you just have it standing on the seat. And again, with the um Did I just knock it off? I totally did. I totally did. Hang on. He's, he's in there. Good thing we've got another Grogu. <laughs> we dropped the baby. Don't worry. We got another one. There's always another. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's really cool is you can take, of course, the canopy and put that back on. And now we can kind of see Mando and Grogu together with it in there. I hope that's picking up. It's kind of hard to tell if it's picking up. Oh, yeah. Well, kind of. I mean, you're definitely seeing Mando. Well, anyway, now he's sitting up at a height where you can see him. And there you have it. Let's go ahead and bring up the rest of the crew. So here's our man. His name is Ladorian. All right, so here is our the Mandalorian figure. We're going to stick him in. Here is his good friend, Cara Dune. Here is his other good friend, Quill. And, of course, where would we be without IG-11? And I just realized that this engine is obstructing your, your entire view of that. There we go. There we go. There's all the there's all the friends. The Razor Crest friends right there just hanging out in their Razor Crest. They all fit in real nice. That's I mean that's pretty much how I'm gonna have my Razor Crest. Not necessarily displayed, but I'm gonna have my Razor Crest with my Kara, my IG, my my Quill inside of it. I think that would be really cool. And then it just looks awesome. Um, or, you know, of course, if you want to recreate other scenes, here is, uh, Mando taking in, uh, taking in Mithral. You can have him with his handcuffs on, have, have classic, classic suit Mando on behind him. That's, that's my favorite armor. And this marks the sixth vintage collection Din Djarin, the Mandalorian figure that we have in the VC now that the Razor Crest, Razor Crest is officially out. And the seventh and three three quarter scale, if you include the retro collection, Din Djarin, the Mandalorian. Here we have the first Mando. Here we have technically the second one. And then the carbonized. Here's regular Beskar. Here he is next to cloth goods. And then, of course, the other newest one to hit retail. Snowy Mando. So now, now in VC, we're up to six. The Mandalorians were up to four Grogu's. Two, no, three, three, no, four. Yeah, four Grogu's, four carded released Grogu's. I was trying to think, was one of them not carded? I mean, they're all carded. Two individual carded released Grogu's, two packed with Mandos. But there we go. We're up to six Mandos so far in the vintage collection. They look awesome. Still one of my all-time favorite Star Wars characters for sure. 
Last but not least, guys, let's go ahead and get this bad boy on his display stand real quick. So we're going to go ahead and put all his panels back on. And okay, guys, last but not least, the stand. We got to display it on the stand. I know we've been displaying it the whole time on the landing gear, but here we are. We're going to take our stand right here. We're going to take those landing gear off before we put it on said stand. So you're just going to pull straight out and hopefully not knock a panel off. And then we're going to do this, try to do the same over here. We're going to pull straight out. And that, that time we didn't knock off any panels. So that's nice. So now I got to grab that. Okay. Got that pop back on. And then the last one, of course, just there we go. It comes right out. Slide that shut so it's because it's displayed as though it's in flight, which I really love about this stand. I really like that a lot. Okay. So what's really cool about the stand is. The front end plugs in right here to this spot right here. So just kind of line it up. It just rests nice and easy on there. There we go. And there you have it. You can have it beautifully displayed as though it's in flight going to deliver a bounty, pick up a bounty, or one of the little mini adventures that Mando and Grogu get to. And that's it for today, guys. So I know this was a lot. I know we had a bunch of stuff to cover with the Hazlab Razor Crest, but honestly, when it came to various pieces of detail, panels, playability, Hazlab definitely delivered with the Razor Crest. Definitely the most diff difficult portion of this was putting in the weapons in the weapons cabinet. But all in all, I had a lot of fun playing with it pretty much the entire time anyway. So not a big deal. Really loved it. Would I change some things? Maybe. But honestly, I'm happy with what we got. I'm more excited that we finally have it. The Razor Crest is here. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you go to rebelscum.com daily just in case uh, you, you miss out on videos such as this. And there's other kinds of content too, such as articles, um, news, and you know, you never know. So make sure you're going every single day. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification so you don't miss out in case you forget when our videos are going up. That way you will know and be able to keep track of it just a little bit better. Go to rebelscumshop.com for all kinds of awesome exclusive merch. And that's it for today, guys. We'll see you later. We'll see you another time. May the force be with all of you, you rebel scum.